Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you all about SNMP traps and set it up in Zebex. Now, receiving SNMP traps is the opposite of querying SNMP devices. Information is sent from an SNMP device to a trap daemon that will either be listening locally or somewhere else on the network. The trap daemon will usually be listening on port 162. So, depending where you put it and what operating system, you may need to set up firewall rules to accept port 162. There's the Ubuntu Raspbian and Debian version and then there's the CentOS version if you need it. In the previous videos, all of these SNMP devices here that I've configured inside Zabbix server and proxy are SNMP agents with many SNMP items. None of them send SNMP traps yet. If I look at the configuration of one of them in items, SNMP trap, since I've assigned SNMP templates to all of them, they get one item called SNMP traps fallback. If Zabbix server receives any information, which is a type of SNMP trap from any of the hosts, it will put it into the SNMP trap fallback item. And it's a type of log, and we'll be able to read that. So if our devices are sending out SNMP traps, and we've configured this correctly, we'll see them inside Zabbix. So I'll demonstrate that. My switch that I set up in the last video will send out SNMP traps for various things, such as a cold start or a warm start, link up or down, reload. There are many different things that it will send a trap for. So right now, I have configured this at the switch level to send SNMP traps to the IP address of my Zabbix proxy, which is 192.168.1.70. I'll just show you the configuration of my switch. If I telnet onto my switch and do show SNMP, it's telling here that logging enabled logging to 192.168.1.70 on port 162 and there's been some sent already. So whichever hardware SNMP device you have, you probably have an option to enable traps on it. On my documentation down here, these are the commands that I use to enable trapping on my Cisco switch. Of course, your IP addresses will be different and so will your community name. And it's just there for information. So now to get this to work, I need to set up a trap listener or a trap daemon on my Zabbix proxy. Now I can set up an SNMP trap daemon on my Zabbix server if I wanted to and configure my switch to send directly to my Zabbix server's trap daemon. But I'm going to show you how to do this using a Zabbix proxy. The configurations are almost identical. It's just useful to see this in case you ever want to do it. You just apply the same concepts to your Zabbix server. So now also my Zabbix server is on the internet. So if I was to configure the trapper on the Zabbix server, I'd have to be much more careful about firewall rules. Whereas on my private network, this is a demilitarized zone and I'm going to leave port 162 open so that all of my servers on the network are able to send SNMP traps to it. Okay, so here's another way to look at it. That's the network switch with traps enabled. On my Zabbix proxy, I will install a service called SNMP Trap D. When that receives new information, it will process it using a Zabbix Trap Receiver Perl script, which will add a header to it that Zabbix needs, and then Zabbix will send that off to Zabbix server, and it'll be stored in the first instance in the SNMP Trap fallback items. And then I'll show you how to create specific items for traps containing specific information. Okay, so going back to here, what I'm going to need to do is edit the Zabbix server or proxy configuration. And since I'm doing this on the proxy, I'm going to edit my proxy configuration. These are the two values I need to set. So on my Zabbix proxy, the Zabbix proxy configuration, okay, these are the two values here. The first one, SNMP trapper needs to be one. What it'll do is it'll read them from a log file on the system. It gives you an option here, var log SNMP trap. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to use this one, temp Zabbix traps temp. Now, since that's the default, I don't have to uncomment it, but I'm going to uncomment it anyway. Just take note of this folder here. This is important. We'll need to set that in two places. If you want to use a different folder than that, it's up to you. But we'll also have to tell the Zabbix trap receiver Perl script where that location is. So I'm going to go with that folder for now. So temp Zabbix traps temp. Okay, so save that control X, yes. Now to restart the Zabbix proxy. 
restart. Status, it's all good. Next bit, Zabbix Trap Receiver Script. It's called Zabbix Trap Receiver.pl, it's a Perl script. We can download it from the Zabbix Git repository here on the internet. So just copy this line, and what this line will do is also output it to a folder user bin Zabbix Trap Receiver.pl. So on my Raspberry Pi, there we go, sudo wget, that's the URL, Zabbix Trap Receiver.pl, output to that folder. All right, now we can look at that file. Enter. And if we scroll down, SNMP trapper file here, temp Zabbix traps temp. So remember, if you use a different folder, then you also need to update it in the Zabbix trap receiver PL. Also, another important thing here, the date time format. It's already set for us, so it's already good. If we look at the configuration inside Zabbix for these items, SNMP trap, there's a log time format there. That's what we're seeing here. Hour, minute, second, year, month, day. So that's already good. This file is already perfect. We don't have to change anything else to it unless you were using a different folder or a different date time format. Control X to exit. Now, before we can execute this file, we'll need to give it execute permissions. So chmod. There we go. Okay, I'll need to use sudo on my Raspberry Pi. And I can ls use uh, bin and down here zabbix trap receiver.pl. Okay, next to install SNMP trap D. Now on my Zabbix proxy, I already have SNMP installed. I also have installed the MIBS downloader. So it's able to convert OIDs into MIBS descriptions. Since it's a Raspbian, I can just sudo apt install SNMP trap D. I've provided the whole line just in case you don't have SNMP or SNMP MIPS downloader already. But anyway, sudo apt install SNMP trap D. Okay, of course, if you were on CentOS, it would be a different line. Now we need to edit the configuration of this SNMP trap D configuration file. Okay, there we go. Everything is commented out. Let's just add these two lines here. Now, my community is not public. It is my community. And this is the location of the Zabbix Trap Receiver Perl script that we just downloaded from the online Zabbix Git repository. So when SNMP Trap D gets new information, it's going to process it through that script. That script will add a header to it, the Zabbix proxy or server needs in order to know about which host to add that item to. Control X to save, yes. Restart the. And we can check its status. Very good. Active running. So that's what we've got now. On my Zabbix proxy, I have SNMP trap daemon running and listening, waiting for. SNMP traps from anything on my network and when it gets them it's going to process them through this script which will then pass it on to the Zabbix proxy which will then pass it on to the Zabbix server and remember I'm doing this on the Zabbix proxy you could just be doing this on the Zabbix server if you wanted to if you didn't want a proxy in between so now that I have an SNMP trap listening on the Zabbix proxy I can send a test message to it and see whether or not we get that in Zabbix server down here, I've created some examples that we can use. These first ones are SNMP trap version 1 protocol, and these ones are version 2C protocol. The first one I'm going to do is the version 2C here, and it's going to say link down example version 2C. I'm going to send it to the IP address of my Raspberry Pi, and I'm actually going to run it from the Raspberry Pi. So simulating a trap message to the SNMP trap daemon listening on this IP address 1.70, which happens to be my Raspberry Pi. And here's an OID with some text S link down example version 2C. Press enter. Now on my Raspberry Pi, I get these errors here. I can ignore those. It has still worked. Now, if I go to Zabbix server, latest data, and I'm just going to filter by general, remove that, and look for SNMP trap apply okay so in my raspberry pi i have now got one value in latest data for snmp traps p 
history. And that's it there. This is the SNMP trap message. UDP, C from 1.70 to 1.70, port 162. My community, the trap. And this is the event. Well, this is a string that I typed in, link down example version 2C. And this is the MIB version of the OID that was sent up here. So let's look what happened in more detail there. I sent this message to the SNMP trap daemon on that IP address, which just happens to be this same Raspberry Pi server. The SNMP trap D got it, then processed it through this Zabbix trap receiver script, reformatted it in Zabbix proxy, which forwarded on the Zabbix server. We can read the contents of that file. Cat temp, Zabbix traps temp. Okay, so up here, right in the first line, it's got the date, Zabbix trap, and the IP address of the host that was the sender of the trap. The IP address exists inside Zabbix. If I go to configuration hosts, Raspberry Pi here, there it is. So it's put that trap message into my Raspberry Pi home fallback item there, which we saw in later starter. So this first line is being added by that script, the Zabbix trap receiver script, before it is then passed on to Zabbix proxy or server. Now, also note the SNMP trap daemon is putting MIBS descriptions in here rather than OIDs. That happens because sudo nano dc snmp snmp.conf, notice snmp.conf, I have the MIBS line there commented out. This means if it finds those OIDs in any of the MIB files in the MIB search path, it will use the MIB description instead. Control X to exit. Okay, and just to show that I can send a trap from a different device now, I'm gonna send a trap from my Ubuntu. Okay, so this is my Ubuntu 20VM. I'll try that same line. Paste, SNMP trap version 2c my community that's the ip address of the snmp trap that is running on my raspberry pi and here's some example values link down example version 2c and this is coming from the ubuntu 20 vm so enter there we go if we look at the raspberry pi and we look at the temp file cat zabbix trap temps there's another entry in here that's come from that ip address it's linked down example version 2c again so let's go into Zabbix server and see whether or not it made it. Zabbix server, this is my Ubuntu 20 VM, latest data. Search for SNMP wrap. There we go. And there's some data there. So it's come from, that's the SNMP traps fallback. Link down example version 2C. Came from that IP address, 192.168.1.108. If I go to configuration hosts and look at my Ubuntu 20 VM, that's the IP address there. So Zabbix has put it into this host. Excellent. Now, monitoring maps. Sending traps manually from the command line is what well, is a manual process. You could write scripts to do that for you upon certain events in your programs. Or what's good about these hardware SNMP devices that you can buy off the shelf, they already have the possibility of sending SNMP traps automatically. So this Cisco switch does for various things that can happen, link up and link down, cold start, warm start, and reload. So I'm gonna demonstrate reloading my switch to see what kind of traps we get in the switch's fallback item. Okay, so let's go into the switch here. I'm gonna telnet to a telnet. Now I need to go into exec mode, enable, and now do a reload. Now this will cause my switch to send SNMP traps to the trap D that I've configured from the switch. Okay, so that's good. The switch is now reloading. If I go to latest data, and just filter that by SNMP trap, Let's have a look here, 833. We can see reload command has been sent from the switch and it's made its way all the way into Zabbix server there. So the received from 192.168.1.1 to my Zabbix proxy on that IP address and that has then sent it to the Zabbix server. 
Reload command. Now, the switch is quite slow. It's going to take a few minutes to fully reboot, but I'll get some more messages in the fallback here. I'll just wait a few minutes. Okay, so a few minutes has passed, and I have a whole lot more trap items coming from that switch. Time to go. There's another one. Another one. Okay, VLAN one up. Hold start there. Interface Ethernet change state to up. There's quite a lot. Now, rather than having all of these items go into the fallback item, SNMB traps fallback, I can create a specific custom trap item looking for a particular thing. So I'm going to set one up to listen for the reload command there. So I'm just going to copy that text. You can search for any text you like. We'll do a regex on that. So configuration hosts on my switch items. I'm going to take the existing one here, the SNMP traps fall back here. And I'm going to clone it. Now note that this is inherited from a template. I'm just going to clone that. It's now an item that exists inside the switch host only. I'm going to call that SNMP traps reload command. That's the name. SNMP trap, the key is SNMP trap regex this time. And the regex is reload command. I'm just finding a string that equals reload command inside any of those traps that come in. And that will be a specific item. Everything else is good. The date, I'm going to leave it in the general application. And that description no longer applies. And that's it. Add. I now have two trap items. This is my custom one. Now I have that, I can create a trigger on that if I want. Every time I get detect the reload command, I can get an alert in my media types. And now because that switch is behind the Raspberry Pi Zabbix proxy, the Zabbix proxy doesn't know about this new item. So config cache reload. Okay, config cache reload. Right. Now let's log back into this switch and force a reload. Okay. Okay, and confirm. All right. Now in latest data, SNMP traps reload command. Get some data on the last value here in a moment. And there we go. There is a new value showing up in reload command history. There we go. Reload command. So SNMP traps. That's what I did. Network switch hardware device has traps enabled. I configured it to send traps to the IP address of my Zabbix proxy which has SNMP trap D running on it, which is configured to use the Zabbix trap receiver Perl script, which reformats those traps to something that Zabbix proxy wants. Zabbix proxy then forwards off to Zabbix server. If the sender's IP address or hostname of the trap exists in Zabbix server, you'll find it in later starter. General. In the fallback items there. There we go. And that's how you create a custom. SNMP trap on a server. Everything will go into fallback if you don't do that. Excellent. Setting up SNMP traps on Zabbix.